Hello everyone, Victor is here and in this video I want to talk about the directing effect in the electrophilic aromatic substitution. So let's start by looking at this reaction over here. Since this is no longer a simple benzene molecule, we can make three different products. We can make this one, this one, and this one. And of course, when I am talking about three products, I only mean the organic products, as we don't really care about the HCl over here, uh, which is our core product. Well, we are going to call them the ortho product, the meta product, and the para products. And if we are going to ignore any electronic effects, we would expect a roughly equal quantities of those products in the resulting mixture. However, the reality is always a little bit more interesting than our expectation. In reality, we have a clear major product, a minor one, and only trace amounts of the last one. And what is even more interesting is that the major product is the one that we would probably not even consider as the major one from the pure statistical perspective. So what's going on here? How can we explain this observation? Well, first, let's look at the resonance structures of the anisole molecule itself. We have an uncharged major contributor and three charged minor contributors. But what is more important is when we combine those into an overall hybrid. By looking at the hybrid structure, we get some idea of the electron density distribution in our molecule. We can see that we have a higher electron density in the ortho, these are the ortho positions, and in the para position. We typically show partial charges with a delta sign. So when I say delta minus, it means that I have a partial negative charge or higher electron density in that position. And as those positions in our molecule have an excessive electron density, they are going to be more reactive in reactions with electrophiles. In other words, electrophiles, which are electron deficient, will be more attracted to those positions. And since the methoxy group pushes the electron density into the ring, making it more reactive with electrophiles, we are going to call the groups like that the activating groups. So let's continue our investigation of this reaction and look at the mechanism in more details. The first step is the electrophile formation, nothing new here. Next, our electrophile will react with anisole, and this is where the interesting part is. At this point, we can attack our molecule at three different positions. We can attack it at the ortho position over here or there, which is the same. We can attack it at the meta position, which is going to be either here or there or we can attack it at the pair position down there. This will give us three different carbocation intermediates or sigma complexes as they are called as well. So since we have three different resonance stabilized intermediates, we need to draw all resonance structure for those to see, well, if there is any difference between them. And once I have all of my resonance structures together, I can see that in the case of the orta and para intermediates, so my orta intermediate is here and my para intermediate is right there. So in the case of those guys, we have four resonance contributors, while in the case of the meta intermediate, we only show three. On top of that, the orta and paracarbocations have the major contributor, so we have a major contributor here, and we have another major contributor over here. This means that those two sigma complexes will be more stable and will form faster, so my orta sigma complex and my para sigma complex will form much faster in this reaction. Remember, the more stable intermediates are typically favored in reactions. And since they have a comparatively lower activation energy leading to their formation, they will form faster. We can also represent it as the energy diagram. This energy diagram is not to scale by any means, but nonetheless, we can see that since the activation energy of the para intermediate, which is going to be right over here, is the lowest, this intermediate will form the fastest. The ortho intermediate that I have over here is a little less favored, mainly due to the steric hindrances that we have between the methoxy group and the chlorine, so it is just a little bit more difficult to attack that position. And there are also some electronic effects that would make the ortho-intermediate formation less favorable, but let's not overcomplicate it for right now. So going back to our mechanism, since the para-intermediate forms faster than the other ones, we would expect that to yield the major product in this reaction. Thus, if you need to explain this regioselectivity on the 
test, you can give a two-fold explanation. First, we have a resonance uh, in the anisole molecule itself, making the ortho pair positions more attractive for the electrophile. And second, the ortho pair resonance stabilized intermediates, or our sigma complexes, is more stable due to the resonance participation from the oxygen atom. I've mentioned earlier, we call groups like methoxy group, like this one, OCH3, the activating groups because it makes the molecule more attractive for the electrophile and since they direct the substitution in the orthopera position we also call them orthopera directors. Also in most cases the para product in the case of the orthopera directors is going to be favored over the ortho product. It's not a hundred percent of time, it's not set in stone rule, but it is often enough so we are going to set it sort of like a soft rule for those types of reactions. So are there any other activating groups? Well of course there are. And we're going to distinguish between the strongly activating groups, typically that's going to be oxygen and nitrogen containing groups with an electron pair, moderately activating groups like sulfur and oxygen and nitrogen that already have resonance with something else, and weakly activating groups typically like alkyl groups and maybe a phenyl group there as well. Strongly activating groups will both activate the ring and stabilize the sigma complex via the resonance. Moderately activating groups still have a resonance effect on both the ring and the sigma complex, however their effect is much smaller due to the fact that either, in the cases like sulfur, that's a very large atom, and the larger the atom, the less of the resonance effect we are going to see for the carbon, or because we already have a resonance going on in the molecule itself and it cannot share the resonance equally between two sides. The weakly activating groups though, they have negligible effect on the ring itself and only will help stabilizing the sigma complex during the reaction. So the weakly activating groups will typically show the worst regioselectivity out of all of them. They're also going to make the aromatic compound only marginally more reactive towards the electrophiles while the strongly and moderately activating groups will make our aromatic compound significantly more reactive towards electrophiles. Also, one other thing that I want to point out here that all activating groups, without exception, are orthopera directors. Well, if there are activating groups, there must be also deactivating groups, right? And yes, you would be absolutely correct about that. So let's look at this example over here. The nitro group is a typical electron withdrawing group or EWG, how we typically designate it, and because of that it is a deactivating group. Let's do the similar analysis that we did for the methoxy group in the anisole. First, let's draw the resonance structures for the nitrobenzene itself and see how the electron density is distributed throughout the molecule. I'll start by showing the full structure of the nitro group. This bit is important here because that will help us to see how the electrons are going to go into the resonance. In resonance, we typically move our electron density either towards the electronegative element like the oxygen or towards the positive charge like what we have on the nitrogen here. If we do this here, we're going to get the following resonance contributors. And of course, like in the previous case, we have the major contributor and we have the minor contributors. The major contributor is going to be the one where we have the minimum number uh, of charges and the minor contributors are going to be the ones where we have more charges and we have open shells on those carbons where the carbon only has six electrons on those. But what's more important is that it shows that in the overall hybrid instead of the delta minus charges on the ortho and para position now we have delta plus charges on the ortho and para positions which means that our ring is now electron depleted and it's going to be significantly less attractive for the reaction with an electrophile. So that means two things. First of all, the molecule is going to be less reactive towards electrophiles. And secondly, the orthopera positions in this molecule are deactivated because they are partially positive. Thus, even if the reaction with an electrophile were to happen, it will most likely go into the meta position instead. So we are going to react it over here and not in the ortho and para positions. For instance, if we look at the reaction like that, 
we'll see that the major product is going to be the metachlorinated molecule and the orthopara isomers would be present in a very negligible trace amounts, if any at all. Also, if we look at the mechanism of this reaction, we'll see the following resonance stabilized intermediates, or our sigma complexes for each of our substitution positions. I purposefully didn't draw any of the resonance contributors with an open shell oxygen in those molecules, because those would be truly negligible contributors. But even with those that I did draw over here, what we see is the situation where the two positive charges are right next to each other on the adjacent atoms. So this one over here and this one over here is really bad news for us. That type of a situation where we have two positive charges, or potentially if we, let's say, had two negative charges, that would be extremely unstable from the thermodynamic perspective. Thus, the overall orthopara contributors here, the entire ortho contributor and the entire para contributor over here, they're going to be quite unstable and thermodynamically unfavorable. And since they're less stable, they'll have a higher energy and will form much slower than the meta contributor. We can represent this with the energy diagram. From the energy diagram perspective, we can also see that the energy pathway that leads us towards the formation of the meta product, this one, has the lowest activation energy, which means that it will happen the fastest. So the picture is pretty much opposite from what we've seen in the case of the activating groups. Now, just like in the case of the donating and activating groups, we are going to put the deactivating groups into three categories. We have strongly deactivating groups that contain species with full positive charges, such as nitro group or ammonium salts or things of that sort. We also have moderately deactivating groups. Those are carbonyls, carboxylic acid derivatives and similar compounds. And finally, we have weakly deactivating groups, which are typically going to be halogens. And while all activating groups are orthopara directors, only strong and moderately deactivating groups going to be meta directors. The halogens, which are weakly deactivating groups, still direct the substitution into the ortho and para positions due to their weak resonance stabilization effect that they can provide for the carbocationic intermediate. So in the case of chlorine, bromine, and iodine, we have those electrons, and those electrons can be used in resonance, and since the atoms are relatively large, the resonance contribution is going to be rather small. So now, we can put all the types of groups we typically see in organic chemistry on the reactivity scale. Here. This is a rather useful little diagram, so you may want to copy it down as you'll need it in the future, especially when you'll be working on a multi-step synthesis in which you'll have several sequential electrophilic aromatic substitutions. It's also a very common exam question when your instructor gives you an already substituted aromatic ring and asks you to predict the product of an electrophilic aromatic substitution using that molecule as a starting material. So, for instance, Let's say we have a reaction between the chlorobenzene here and the nitrating mixture. As chlorine is an orthopara director, we'll do a substitution in the orthopara position in our ring. And we also remember that the orthopara directed reactions, the major product is typically the para isomer, so we'll say that the major product in this case is this para substituted molecule. But if I were to do the reaction or between the nitrobenzene and the chlorine, my major product would be meta isomer. And since the nitro group is a strongly deactivating group, the second reaction will actually proceed significantly slower than the first one. Here is another example. Since the ketone functional group that I have over here, this carbonyl, is a moderately deactivating group and a meta director, would expect our final product to be the meta isomer. But if I switch my groups like this and attempt a Friedel Crafts acylation reaction here. We'll get a big fat nope, as the Friedel Crafts acylation does not work for aromatic rings containing moderately or strongly deactivating groups. Whew. That was a lot of information. But here is a cool part. If you ever forget what sort of directing effect the group has, you can just draw the resonance structures for the molecule itself or the sigma complex and figure it out right there and then. Sometimes finding the best position for the electrophilic aromatic substitution can be a bit of a challenge. But I promise you, the resonance will always help you find your way. 
That's why I emphasize the resonance so much and keep going back and back to it. In the next video, we'll talk about the situation where we have multiple groups on our aromatic compound. In that case, our groups can either collaborate or compete with each other using their director effects. We'll also take a look at the electrophilic aromatic substitution in heteroaromatic compounds and synthesis of aromatic compounds with multiple substituents. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss any future tutorials, and I'll see you in the next video.